Hello friends, let us learn about neuromuscular transmission. If uh, suppose I am drawing a spinal cord here, this is the ventral horn, this is the dorsal horn. From the dorsal horn, I have the motor neurons coming out. These motor neurons are going to supply the different skeletal muscle fibers. Now, this part I am going to magnify. And if this is the terminal end of my motor fiber, and this is my muscle end, this forms a junction between the nerve and the muscle end. And we call this junction as neuromuscular junction. Okay. So what are the events that are happening at the neuromuscular junction? If there is a motor neuron, which is supplying to the different muscle fibers, let me take this in a magnified way. So this is my terminal end, the exon terminal. This is the muscle end. Please mind it, muscle, muscle end, which comes in to a connection to the neuron to form the neuromuscular junction gets enfolded, okay? It enfolds itself. And then it is now called as the motor end plate, okay? And what is the purpose of having so much of enfoldings? It is to increase the surface area for the receptors. So actually this is forming my postsynaptic terminal, or you can say, you know, the muscle end forming the postsynaptic terminal. And this postsynaptic terminal is having the receptors. So all the receptors, they are lodged at this place. Okay. And these receptors are the, what? They are the receptors for the neurotransmitter, which is going to be released from the neural end. And what neurotransmitter is being released here is acetylcholine. And so these receptors are my nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. And why did I have so many enfoldings? These enfoldings are to increase the surface area. Okay. Now, if I want to uh, see what exactly is the mechanism, how is this whole uh, neuromuscular transmission occurring? Let me tell you with the help of a diagram. This actually is an example of chemical transmission. And so the steps are going to be same as the chemical uh, junction, you know, chemical synapse and their functions. Okay. So I take a terminal little bigger one and then I take the muscle end. Let me take the neurotransmitters who are present in vesicles. And what is my neurotransmitter here in case of neuromuscular junction? It is acetylcholine. So what else do I have here? I do have the mitochondria present and acetylcholine being a lighter weight neurotransmitter, they are synthesized here only at the terminal end. So let us start with the first step. What is the first step that happens in a neuromuscular transmission? The first step is arrival of an action potential. So an action potential has arrived. As it arrives to the terminal end, there are voltage-gated calcium ion channels. And this calcium ion channels, which are voltage-gated calcium ion channels, they open up on arrival of action potential. That's the first step. The second is there is opening of voltage-gated calcium ion channels. And so there will be influx of calcium ions, right? So what is the role of my calcium? Let me tell you here itself. Calcium acts as a bridge to bind between the anchoring proteins which are present in the vesicles and the cell membrane. Okay. So we have anchoring proteins on both the sides. So if this is my vesicular anchoring protein and this is my cell membrane anchoring protein, calcium kind of bridges these two. So what is the role? That it causes these neurotransmitters to bind to the presynaptic terminal and by the process of exocytosis, they will release the neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft. And what is the synaptic cleft? The space between the presynaptic terminal and the muscle end is called as the synaptic cleft. Okay. So the first is arrival of the action potential. Second is 
there is opening of the voltage gated calcium ion channels and so there is influx of calcium ions the third step is so this was my first step this was my second step and this is my third step the third step is release of the neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft by the process of exocytosis what is my fourth step fourth step is i have receptors here which are nicotinic receptors ligand gated receptors who are going to bind with my acetylcholine so there is a place for binding of these neurotransmitter the acetylcholine once acetylcholine binds to these receptors these receptors they are actually themselves the ion channels they are going to open up and once they open up there will be influx of sodium ion so what is it i have these receptors who have got the binding sites for acetylcholine these are nicotinic receptors so once acetylcholine binds in they themselves becomes like an ion channel and so they are going to cause the entry of cations which is in excess in the extracellular fluid so sodium gets in once the sodium enters inside this motor end plate region it generates a local potential what we call as the motor end plate potential since this is my postsynaptic end the potential that will be generated is my motor end plate potential so motor end plate potential is nothing but a local potential or a graded potential which is generated at the postsynaptic end or the muscle end very good next once there is depolarization here you know small depolarization over here what is it going to do it is going to open up the voltage gated sodium ion channels the bigger ones and once they open up there will be mass influx of sodium ions so once there is mass influx of sodium ions what am i going to get definitely my potential depolarizing current is going to be more and i may reach my threshold level and once i reach my threshold level an action potential is generated this action potential is called as muscle action potential okay so what did we see in a whole of the process that once these neurotransmitters they bind to their receptors these receptors are ligand gated ion channels and so these channels open up there is influx of sodium ions a small influx of sodium ions will give rise to a small graded potential at the muscle end and we call it as motor end plate potential this motor end plate potential reaches to the threshold level it may give rise to an action potential and this action potential which is generated at the terminal end we call it as muscle action potential so what in simple word is my neuromuscular transmission so neuromuscular transmission is conversion of nerve action potential which came here this was actually a nerve action potential and by different steps now it has got converted as an action potential to the muscle end so this is called as muscle action potential one thing to be noted here is what happens what is the fate of this acetylcholine so acetylcholine some of them will bind to the receptors the rest will be hydrolyzed by their enzymes okay they are going to be hydrolyzed by their enzymes acetylcholine esterase enzyme which is going to hydro hydrolyze or break this into two components the acetyl coa and the choline and what will happen to the acetyl coa acetyl coa will be reuptaken at the terminal end and thereby utilized for the uh, formation of acetylcholine the neurotransmitter clear so this is what we call as the neuromuscular transmission